Did you know that the biggest drain on your energy and focus isn't the obstacles you face, but the toxic people and unnecessary battles you choose to engage in? It's true. Every day, we're bombarded by negativity, whether from difficult individuals, challenging situations, or internal self-doubt, and it can pull us off course faster than we realize. If you want to achieve your goals, maintain your mental peace, and build meaningful connections, you need to master the art of choosing your battles wisely and protecting your energy. And trust me, this is a game changer. By understanding how to navigate toxic interactions, recognize false cordiality, and focus on what really matters, you'll be able to transform the way you handle life's challenges. In this video, I'll share with you some of the best strategies to shield yourself from negativity, empower your mindset, and create space for true growth. Avoid this mistake, letting toxic people and unnecessary arguments dictate your peace and progress. Instead, let's dive into how you can take control, stand strong, and rise above all the distractions holding you back. So, if you're ready to unlock the power of protecting your peace and choosing the right path, keep watching. You won't want to miss what's coming next. Number 1. Maintaining focus on your goals. Amidst negativity, ah, the excitement of a new goal. There's this powerful feeling when you decide to take on something meaningful, something that makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning. Maybe you're aiming to learn a new skill, start a business, pursue a health journey, or advance in your personal projects. It's that sweet spot of motivation where everything seems possible, where you envision your future self achieving greatness and reaping the rewards of your hard work. But then, just as you're getting comfortable with the idea of success, life has a way of throwing you a curveball. Imagine this, you're walking confidently down your chosen path, your goal in sight, and suddenly you encounter people or situations that seem determined to pull you down. It could be subtle, like a casual comment from a friend that makes you second-guess yourself, or blatant, like outright skepticism from family members. It's as if they can't see the vision you have, or worse, they don't believe you can reach it. Take a moment and think back to a time when you felt that surge of hope, that sense of unstoppable determination, only to have it challenged by someone else's negativity. Remember how disheartening it felt, the disappointment, the frustration, maybe even a little self-doubt. It's a familiar feeling, right? Many of us have been there, starting on what feels like a clear, straightforward path, only to be hit with unexpected hurdles that shake our confidence. But here's where things get interesting. Let's look at this from a different angle instead of letting these setbacks drain us. What if we could use them as fuel? There's a lesson here, an opportunity to strengthen our resolve and build resilience. And that's where the principles of Stoicism come in. Learning to remain unaffected by the opinions or actions of others, focusing only on what's within our control. This isn't about pretending the negativity isn't there, it's about recognizing it and choosing not to let it affect us. You might be wondering, how exactly do we do that? How can we stay focused and maintain our passion when it feels like the world is trying to shake our confidence? That's what we'll explore as we continue. Stick with me and let's dive deeper into the art of resilience, the power of maintaining our path, and how to become the kind of person who stays grounded even when others try to throw them off course. Number 2. Learning from Jordan's Journey – Resilience Against Skepticism Let's talk about someone who many of us might find a bit of ourselves in Jordan. Picture him, ambitious, full of ideas, and ready to conquer a new goal. For Jordan, it was starting a small online business, something he believed in wholeheartedly. He'd researched, planned, and even taken steps to bring his idea to life. There was that spark in his eyes, the fire that only true passion can ignite. 
but as Jordan shared his plans, he encountered something he hadn't anticipated skepticism. Friends and family voiced doubts, some out loud and others subtly, planting seeds of doubt in his mind. Some people recommended he consider safer career paths, urging him to avoid the risks. To Jordan, though, this wasn't just a project. It was his dream, his chance to create something meaningful, even if it wasn't guaranteed to succeed. Have you ever been in Jordan's shoes? Maybe you had a goal that others just didn't seem to understand. Remember how frustrating it was to hear people question something you felt so deeply connected to. The temptation to argue, to convince others of your vision, can be almost overwhelming. But, as Jordan realized, debating with doubters is like trying to pour water into a cup with a hole at the bottom. It rarely fills them up with the confidence you feel, and often, it just drains you in the process. So, instead of getting tangled up in endless debates, Jordan did something different. He turned inward, redirecting the energy he could have spent convincing others into refining his skills, expanding his knowledge, and taking concrete steps to build his business. He committed himself to his goal, not in the hope of proving others wrong, but because he wanted to build something valuable for himself. It was a shift in mindset that made all the difference. Jordan's journey teaches us a powerful lesson about resilience. Instead of letting external negativity seep in and derail his progress, he fortified his vision from within. He built a mental shield, learning to let go of the need for validation and focusing on what he could control, his actions, his learning and his persistence. It's an approach that resonates deeply, especially for anyone who has felt the sting of doubt from those closest to them. Think back to your own goals and dreams. Can you recall a time when you were met with skepticism? How did it feel to be questioned, to see people you care about not fully understanding your ambitions? It's natural to want that support, but sometimes, as Jordan discovered, the journey requires us to believe in ourselves even when others can't see our vision. Number three, applying stoic principles to handle toxic people. Life has a way of introducing us to all kinds of personalities, and unfortunately, not everyone we meet will lift us up. Sometimes we encounter individuals who seem to drain our energy, bringing more negativity than positivity into our lives. They're the ones who leave us feeling a little heavier, a little less confident after each encounter. These are the toxic people, and learning how to navigate relationships with them is crucial for anyone striving to stay on track with their goals. But how do we handle such individuals without letting their negativity infiltrate our own mindset? The Stoics had a profound answer to this focus only on what's within your control. We can't change other people's attitudes or actions, but we can change how we respond to them. Imagine yourself wearing a raincoat in a downpour. The rain represents the negativity coming your way, but the raincoat, your mental resilience, keeps you dry, preventing the negativity from soaking into your spirit. Think about a time when you've dealt with someone who just seemed determined to bring you down. Maybe it was a co-worker, a friend, or even a family member. Every conversation seemed to spiral into complaints, criticisms, or dismissive remarks. It's exhausting, right? And after a while, it can start to wear on you, making you doubt yourself or question your decisions. But what if, instead of letting their energy affect you, you could put up an invisible shield, a mental boundary that keeps you focused and unfazed. This is where Stoicism offers us a powerful tool. The Stoics believed that by cultivating inner strength, we could maintain our peace regardless of what others throw at us. It's not about ignoring people or pretending their words don't sting. It's about deciding that their words won't define us. It's a practice of resilience, a way of saying, I see your negativity, but I choose not to absorb it. And here's a trick to remember, just like a raincoat doesn't stop the rain but keeps you dry. 
Mental resilience doesn't eliminate toxic people, but it keeps their influence from reaching your core. With each encounter, you can practice this resilience by consciously deciding how much weight you'll give to others' words. You become the gatekeeper of your own mind, allowing in only what serves you and brushing off what doesn't. Let's take it one step further. How often do we find ourselves mentally replaying these interactions, letting the negativity linger? Imagine if instead you could release it, like water off a raincoat. The next time you face someone who tries to bring you down, visualize their words bouncing off, leaving you unaffected. It's not just a mental exercise, it's a way to build your inner peace, one interaction at a time. So, as you continue on your journey, think of these toxic encounters as opportunities to strengthen your resilience. Remember, you can't control others, but you can control your response. Each time you choose not to engage with their negativity, you're not only protecting your peace, but also showing yourself that your goals, your happiness, and your sense of self are worth defending. Number four, embracing a mental barrier, resilience against negativity. Imagine waking up in the morning with a clear goal in mind. There's that initial thrill a sense of purpose that pushes you out of bed and onto the path you've set for yourself. You feel a surge of motivation, envisioning the steps you'll take, the progress you'll make, and the satisfaction you'll feel as you check off each milestone. It's a moment of pure determination and excitement. But, as with any worthwhile journey, negativity seems to pop up like obstacles on a winding road. Sometimes it's subtle, like a doubting remark from a friend. Other times it's more direct, like someone who openly questions your decisions or criticizes your approach. These interactions can be draining, testing your resolve and shaking your confidence. Think about how often we find ourselves replaying these moments, allowing them to affect our mindset long after the conversation has ended. Here's where the concept of a mental barrier comes in a powerful tool that enables you to engage with the world around you without letting the negativity seep into your spirit. Building a mental barrier doesn't mean ignoring the challenges or pretending that negativity doesn't exist. It's about creating a protective layer, a way to acknowledge the negativity without letting it alter your path or your perspective. Imagine this mental barrier as a glass shield around your mind. You can see the negativity for what it is, but it bounces off, unable to penetrate your core. Instead of absorbing doubt or criticism, you observe it and let it slide away. This practice is rooted in the principles of Stoicism, focusing on what you can control and releasing the need to engage with every opinion or judgment thrown your way. Reflecting on past experiences can be a powerful reminder of why this mental barrier is so essential. Think back to a time when negativity from others made you question yourself, your goals, or your direction. Perhaps it was a career choice, a personal decision, or even a lifestyle change. Remember the weight of that self-doubt, the energy it drained from you. The beauty of a mental barrier is that it liberates you from these past burdens allowing you to move forward with clarity and purpose. Curious about how to build this mental barrier? It starts with small conscious decisions. Begin by pausing whenever you encounter negativity. Take a deep breath, recognize the source of the comment or action and ask yourself, does this truly impact my journey or is it just noise? Over time, this practice will help you build a resilient mindset one that remains focused on your goals and immune to distractions. Embracing this mental barrier empowers you to pursue your dreams without the weight of others' opinions, giving you the freedom to shape your life on your terms. Number five, redirecting energy toward your path, not convincing detractors. There's something exhilarating about starting a journey you believe in. You've mapped out your steps, set your goals, and begun taking action. There's an inner spark, a sense of purpose that fills you with energy as you press forward. 
However, it's often the case that as we make progress, we encounter people who don't understand or appreciate our vision. Their skepticism can be discouraging, tempting us to invest time and energy into convincing them of our path. But what if, instead of pouring energy into persuading others, you directed it fully into your goals? Imagine how much further you could go if you didn't spend time justifying your choices to people who may never see your vision the way you do. Think of it as conserving your fuel for the journey ahead, rather than using it to illuminate the path for those standing on the sidelines. Take a moment to recall a time when you felt the need to explain yourself to someone who simply didn't get it. Maybe it was a family member, a colleague, or a friend who questioned your decisions, leaving you feeling frustrated. You may have found yourself defending your choices, hoping they'd understand your perspective. But, more often than not, these explanations don't change minds, they just drain our energy and shift our focus away from our goals. Redirecting this energy is about realizing that you don't need validation to pursue your dreams. It's about focusing on those who do believe in you, and more importantly, on your own belief in yourself. This redirection isn't an act of dismissiveness, but rather an act of self-respect. It's about recognizing that your time and energy are valuable and should be invested in actions that move you forward. Curious about how to start redirecting this energy? Begin by identifying moments when you feel compelled to explain yourself. Ask yourself if this explanation will genuinely serve you or your goal. Over time, you'll find that conserving this energy for your journey makes you stronger and more focused. By choosing to walk your path without seeking constant approval, you allow yourself to make authentic progress, free from the weight of external expectations. Number six, seeking support. When facing challenges with toxic individuals, Embarking on any significant journey comes with its share of challenges, and sometimes those challenges include dealing with toxic individuals. While building a mental barrier can shield us from negativity, it's also essential to recognize the power of support from others. There's a special comfort in knowing we're not alone, that we have people who genuinely understand and uplift us, especially when navigating relationships that drain rather than nurture. Think about a time when you faced a difficult interaction, perhaps with a colleague who never seemed to have a kind word, or a friend who constantly criticized your decisions. Maybe you even questioned yourself, wondering if you were overreacting or imagining the negativity. But then you confided in someone you trusted, a family member, a close friend, or a mentor, and they validated your feelings. It was a reminder that you weren't alone in your struggle, that others saw and understood what you were going through. Having a support system isn't about leaning on others to solve our problems. It's about finding people who can offer perspective, encouragement, and even a gentle reminder of our worth when we're faced with toxic influences. These are the people who help us stay grounded, who remind us of our strengths and goals when negativity threatens to cloud our vision. They're the ones who lift us up, helping us build resilience against the toxic individuals who may come our way. Curious about strengthening your support system? Start by identifying people who have shown genuine care for you in the past. Reach out to them, share your journey, and express your gratitude for their presence in your life. Building a support network isn't about having as many people as possible, it's about having the right people who can remind you of your value and help you stay true to your path, no matter what negativity you face. Number 7. Managing self-talk to combat external negativity. Our internal dialogue, or self-talk, is one of the most influential aspects of our mental health and resilience. It's the voice that accompanies us through every experience, shaping our responses to both positive and negative situations. When faced with external negativity, managing our self-talk becomes crucial to maintaining a healthy mindset and staying focused on our goals. 
Imagine this. You're working hard toward a personal or professional goal. You're making progress, feeling motivated, and then, seemingly out of nowhere, someone makes a negative comment. Maybe they dismiss your efforts or question your capabilities. In that moment, it's natural for doubt to creep in. You might find yourself thinking, are they right? Am I really capable of this? This is where self-talk plays a pivotal role. Managing self-talk means consciously choosing thoughts that support rather than undermine you. It's about recognizing when negativity from others begins to influence your inner dialogue and choosing to counter it with affirming, empowering messages. Think of it as a mental reset, a way to take control of your narrative rather than letting external negativity dictate your self-perception. Reflect on moments in your life when negative self-talk held you back. Maybe it was an opportunity you didn't pursue, a conversation you avoided, or a risk you didn't take because you doubted yourself. Now, imagine if you'd had a positive, supportive voice guiding you instead. What would you have done differently? Curious about transforming your self-talk? Start by catching yourself in moments of doubt. When you notice negative thoughts arising, replace them with statements that affirm your capabilities and remind you of your strengths. Over time, this practice will help you build a resilient mindset, one that remains grounded even when others try to bring you down. By managing your self-talk, you become your own greatest ally, turning potential doubts into powerful motivators that keep you moving forward. Number eight, adopting a solution-oriented approach to toxic interactions. When it comes to dealing with toxic individuals, one of the most empowering shifts we can make is adopting a solution-oriented approach. Toxic interactions can be draining, leaving us feeling stuck, frustrated, and sometimes even questioning ourselves. But by focusing on solutions rather than dwelling on the negativity, we can navigate these situations with resilience and clarity. Imagine facing a challenging situation with a toxic individual. Perhaps it's a colleague who constantly undermines your work, or a family member who always finds something negative to say. It's easy to get caught up in the frustration, replaying their words and wondering why they act this way. But instead of letting the negativity consume you, a solution-oriented approach encourages you to ask, what can I do to handle this situation in a way that protects my peace and keeps me moving forward? This mindset is about focusing on what you can control. You can't change how others behave, but you can choose how to respond. Whether it's setting boundaries, redirecting conversations, or minimizing contact, a solution-oriented approach empowers you to take action that supports your well-being. It's about recognizing that, while you may not be able to eliminate toxic people from your life entirely, you can minimize their impact. Reflect on past interactions where you felt powerless in the face of negativity. Now, imagine approaching those situations with a solution-oriented mindset. Picture yourself calmly addressing the issue, setting clear boundaries, or finding ways to protect your mental space. By focusing on solutions, you not only regain control, but also build confidence in your ability to handle difficult interactions without sacrificing your peace. Curious about how to implement a solution-oriented approach in your life? Start by identifying specific actions you can take when faced with toxic behavior. It could be as simple as limiting conversations, choosing to disengage when negativity arises, or seeking support from others who uplift you. Over time, this practice will help you navigate challenging interactions with grace and resilience, keeping your focus on what truly matters, your growth and well-being. Number nine, choosing battles wisely and avoiding unnecessary arguments. We've all been there. You're in a heated conversation, whether it's with a family member, a colleague, or even a stranger, and suddenly something snaps. A comment is made, a tone is raised, 
and before you know it, you're in the midst of an argument. At the time, it feels urgent, as if winning this exchange will prove something about your stance, your values, or your worth. But have you ever found yourself walking away from such an argument feeling drained, even if you won? That's because, at its core, unnecessary arguing does little to advance your goals or protect your peace. Imagine a situation where you're facing off with someone, trying to prove your point. They're digging their heels in, and so are you. Each word feels like ammunition, but after the exchange, you feel emotionally exhausted, questioning if it was really worth it. The energy you could have spent pursuing your passions, advancing your career, or improving your relationships, is instead wasted in a battle that doesn't truly matter. Choosing your battles wisely isn't about avoiding confrontation at all costs. It's about discerning when an argument is constructive and when it's simply a distraction. Think back to the last time you found yourself in a pointless argument, one that didn't change anyone's mind, but only served to escalate the tension. What would you have done differently if you had walked away instead? What could you have done with that time and energy instead? The key to choosing your battles wisely is learning to assess the value of each confrontation. Ask yourself, does this argument serve a purpose or is it a test of ego? The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Apply this principle to your battles, what truly matters to you and what can you let go of? Redirect your energy toward things that contribute to your personal growth and well-being. Whether it's working toward your career goals, spending quality time with loved ones, or investing in your health, there's always a better use of your time than engaging in endless debates that lead nowhere. Over time, you'll start recognizing the difference between an argument that fosters growth and one that simply fuels division. Curious about how to master the art of choosing your battles? Start small. Reflect on the last few arguments you've been part of. Did they advance your goals or did they detract from your peace? Then, think about how you could have diffused the situation, perhaps by stepping back, calmly stating your perspective and walking away, knowing that sometimes silence is more powerful than words. By doing this consistently, you'll start building the discipline to choose your battles wisely and avoid draining confrontations that don't align with your values. Number 10. Recognizing false cordiality in toxic people. Not all toxic behavior is overt or easily recognizable. Sometimes it's hidden behind a veil of politeness, where toxic individuals mask their negativity with a smile or a seemingly friendly demeanor. This false cordiality can be incredibly confusing because, on the surface, these people seem harmless, even pleasant. But beneath that surface, there's an underlying current of criticism, manipulation, or judgment that can slowly erode your peace. Imagine this scenario. You're having a conversation with someone who seems perfectly nice, offering compliments and listening attentively. But as the interaction continues, you start noticing subtle digs, backhanded comments, or passive-aggressive remarks. It's almost as if their kindness is a cover for something darker. You might feel uneasy, unsure whether you're just being overly sensitive or if there's something off about the interaction. Recognizing false cordiality is essential for protecting your emotional well-being. These individuals often come across as friendly, but their true intentions may be to subtly undermine your confidence, create doubt, or keep you in a state of discomfort. They don't necessarily engage in direct confrontation instead. They use veiled language, sweetened with just enough charm to keep you second-guessing your instincts. It's important to trust your gut in these situations. If someone's words don't match their actions, or if their compliments come with hidden barbs, that's a red flag. You don't need to confront them head-on, but you should start setting boundaries around these interactions. 
The Stoic philosopher Seneca once advised, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. These subtle forms of toxicity can sometimes make you feel small, anxious, or unsupported, but recognizing them early helps you prevent them from having a larger impact on your life. To protect yourself, start becoming aware of the patterns in these interactions. Pay attention to how you feel after spending time with certain individuals. Do you feel drained, belittled, or unsupported? If so, you may be dealing with false cordiality. When this happens, don't engage in a battle to prove their insincerity. Instead, maintain your focus on your goals and relationships that truly nourish you. Remember, you can be kind without tolerating toxicity, and you can walk away from situations that don't serve your peace. Curious about how to handle false cordiality? Begin by developing your emotional awareness. The next time you encounter someone whose kindness feels off, take a step back and assess their behavior. You'll soon develop a keen sense of when someone's politeness is genuine and when it's simply a cover for something less wholesome. Trusting your instincts and setting healthy boundaries will empower you to protect your peace and avoid getting caught in a toxic cycle. Number 11. Protecting your peace and building genuine connections. In our fast-paced world, we're constantly surrounded by noise, both literal and metaphorical. The distractions are endless, from the constant hum of social media to the pressures of work and personal life. But amidst all of this external chaos, it's crucial to prioritize something that can sometimes feel elusive your peace. Protecting your peace isn't just about avoiding stress or drama. It's about creating a space where you can breathe freely, think clearly, and grow without unnecessary interference. Picture this. You've spent weeks pushing yourself toward a big goal, whether it's a career achievement, a personal project, or a relationship milestone. You're making steady progress, feeling more confident and focused than ever. But then, someone or something enters your life that disrupts this peace. It could be a toxic interaction, a negative influence, or even a new responsibility that feels overwhelming. Suddenly, your mental clarity is clouded, your energy is drained, and your once calm state is replaced with stress. When you protect your peace, you create a foundation from which you can operate at your best. You allow yourself the space to respond thoughtfully, not react impulsively, you don't let every challenge shake you because you know your sense of peace is the bedrock of your strength. Building genuine connections is a key part of maintaining that peace. Surround yourself with people who uplift you, support your growth, and share your values. Genuine connections are rooted in mutual respect, trust, and understanding. These are the relationships that add value to your life, not the ones that drain you. Toxic relationships may demand your attention, but they rarely provide anything meaningful in return. True, supportive friendships and partnerships, on the other hand, are built on a foundation of authenticity. To build genuine connections, start by investing time in people who bring out the best in you. Whether it's a mentor, a close friend, or a significant other, these individuals create a positive and nurturing environment where you can thrive. Spend your energy cultivating relationships that inspire and challenge you while minimizing interactions that don't serve your well-being. Curious about how to protect your peace while building genuine connections? Begin by setting clear boundaries with people who bring negativity into your life Say no to draining conversations and yes to opportunities that nourish you. Practice mindfulness and meditation to center yourself and create internal peace, no matter the external circumstances. With time, you'll find that when you protect your peace, you naturally attract more genuine connections, people who want to see you succeed, grow, and live a fulfilling life. To wrap things up, Remember that protecting your peace and choosing your battles wisely isn't just about avoiding negativity. 
It's about prioritizing your energy, staying focused on your goals, and building the life you truly want. It takes practice, self-awareness, and a commitment to your own growth, but the rewards are absolutely worth it. So, keep your mental barrier strong, redirect your energy toward what matters, and build connections that elevate you. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far, this shows that you're part of the 0.01% who actually finish what they start. If you're serious about transforming your life and taking control of your destiny, make sure to hit that subscribe button, join our community and stay on the path to greatness.